Got me in church. Peace and love, peace and one love, everybody. I am Sister Freedom, and welcome to Unscramble Minds. Don't forget, I'm Big Mama, too. Don't forget that part. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. I'm Dulcinea. It is Wednesday, ain't it? <laughs> How y'all doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank y'all for tuning in and joining us, beautiful ladies. I'm Nisha. Okay, y'all, Dots had to step, um, fall down, but she's coming back up. She had a little problems with her computer. So tonight is the night. Y'all gonna really gonna have to, y'all going to accept some truth here. So why don't you tell us again who you are, Mr. Hayes, and just a little bit about yourself. You don't got to go through a lot. Just a little bit about yourself because you you know you're only giving us a, um, you know, a little bit of time tonight. Just, you know, so. Okay. So, so we mm-hmm. we just gonna brush over it real quick. Okay. I, I was born in Chicago under the banner of David Boxdale and Larry Hoover. I grew up between Chicago and Michigan. In Michigan, we lived in Grand Rapids and Pontiac. <clears throat> and in Pontiac, I had had to go through a whole lot of my trials as a teenager, establishing my um, position in the community here. Put they call it putting me in work, right? So I put in work here. They said I was a big fish in a small pond. So they took me out to Lake Michigan and flipped me across Lake Michigan back to where I was born to see if I could get it from the dirt and if I was truly a big fish in the small pond. Well, when they got done running, they tests on me in Chicago. That's Chief Malik Angel Bay and Larry Hoover. The word came back. That nigga not no big fish in the pond, in the lake. That motherfucker is a, a whale in the lake. Right? We can't say no cussies. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Because, you know, I'm politically incorrect. So the politics ain't correct. So it's hard for me to be politically correct sometimes. Anyway, so during the course, I went through the system, as we all end up doing when we out in the streets, doing what we do out there. And going through the system, um, I began a journey of self-discovery and self-education. My oldest brother and my sister right under me, they used to buy my book supply. Instead of, you know how people always be like, send me some money, send me some money when they lay it locked up. I was like, send me some books. Send me some more books. I was like, Johnny Five, more input. (laughs) More input. But I didn't know while I was going through my struggles that I was being trained for something. And my character being tested at every turn, um, slandered, talked about, looked down upon, frowned on, kicked to the curb. And 
I still stay who I was. They call it remaining pure at heart. This is part of the testing for chiefs on the land. As we go across the land, how do you be received by the other clans on the land? And while I was um, trying to evade the law, law for six years, I used that six years to traverse the land and become familiar with the different customs from my elders in the south, from the northeast. I was going over all of the territory that I was responsible for putting Big Mama back in her place so she can balance back out the tribes. So this was um, a journey of training that I didn't know I was on. Well, it came word through the Wind Talker channel. If you're not a native to the land, you have no fucking no clue what I'm talking about <laughs> when I say Wind Talker channel. But the Wind Talker channel is, uh, they call them cold talkers. The CIA used them in World War II to crack the Japanese codes when they was talking in code. But when we talk the wind talk, they can't never crack it because we listening to nature and we talking to nature. Nature, two chiefs is like being on the telephone. They can be in nature on different parts of the planet and communicate with each other using the method that we call the wind talking channel. And this is shamanic training of indigenous origin or organic American origin. Those who was here from time immemorial. We call them totem clans. Right? The totem clans is the first clans. That's why that's the law of the totem pole is the law of the land and the law of the flag is the law of the seeds. We didn't wave flags over here until Europe settled over here. When Europe settled over here, we made a flag that, that we call the Confederate flag. And we made the banner known as the banner of the great law. So that we had a flag that shows our presence in places without being conspicuous to the enemy of who we are. So they demonized the Confederate flag, said it represented slavery and oppression to our people. All the time, it's old glory that all of the races blood is settled on. The one we pledge allegiance to in elementary school because none of our parents don't know any better. It was old glory that um, um, Oklahoma City was bombed. It wasn't the Confederate flag. It was under old glory that Rosewood was burned down. It wasn't the Confederate flag. It was under old glory when they bombed the move party, the move family, a uh, giant Africa in Philadelphia, that was under old glory. But we have a selective memory. If it doesn't fit the Eurocentric paradigm given to reject any possibility that one of us know what we talking about. So when um, they say we had to teach a hard headed people, I know what they mean now because we stuck on false narratives. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a piece of the false narrative that they will kill you about. The righteous. I'm sorry. Oops. You, <laughs> I'm sorry, no, no, sweetie. I don't, want to stop you. I don't want to stop your wisdom at all. Okay. So um, in settling back to who I am, because I'm a, from a totem clan, an old Mississippian, the black gorilla family, right? The gorilla clan, that's my totem. And the gorilla position is right before you go out to the arena. So we always on deck, but we ain't supposed to be called until nobody else can't fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So I come in and I'm analyzing the historical narrative given and then I'm knocking on the wind talker channel to verify if the information is correct. Now, some people would say that you get it from psychic means, but it's talking to chiefs. 
a chief that ever lived on this land, his spirit still speak from the ancestral realm on the Wind Talker channel. So we can communicate with all of the past chiefs using the Hayoka priest method of wind talking or cold talking, talking to nature. The ancestral realm is weaved into nature. This is how we have clans named after animals. That's mm -hmm. named after the animal because it's their total. It's the family totem, right? And sometimes the family totem is a body part, as in the case of the Blackfoot, right? And they, they was called that for several reasons. Uh, one of them, because when they was going to the Gullah Wars, coming from the center of the country, they walked barefooted and the sun cooked their feet. When Big Mama seen them, she called them black feet. Not to mention that that was what they did to uh, identify the enemies that they captured and killed is take one of his foot. And anybody seen the decaying foot, it turned black. So all of these was terms to identify who they are, what they did. So when we listen to the elders, they left it in the pottery. They spit it in the music. We listen to the old Delta blues and we can get codes out of there from the ancestors that was before the settlers. Because some of those songs that they call old blues tunes go, been sang for generations, telling us a story. Those are the grids of the land telling the story in song format that they used to do dancing around the fire. Now they put it on wax and ship it across the country. All of the people get exposed to it, but all of the people don't know what they're listening to. They think they just listening to good music. Right? So you got songs like Keep My Mojo Working. Right? What are you talking about? You got a real big one called I Put a Hex on You. What they talking about? They reminding you that we was the ones who had the conjure of they call voodoo long before settlers came and voodoo is using the forces of nature to do your bidding for you. So you don't have to go to war with nobody. You can just let the rain flood them out. You can let them get struck by a bolt of lightning. Well, let me ask you something about that first. Let me say thank you to those who came tonight to listen to the master teacher, Rod Hayes. Master student, Malachi, the master teacher. Master student. Okay. <laughs> I'm also going to say subscribe if you haven't and hit the like button if you haven't. Um, how did you like being on, on Sinetta's channel yesterday? That was an experience, right? Yeah, that, that was pretty cool. I, I love Sinetta. I've been watching him um, for years. I watched young, uh, young Pharaoh grow up over there. I watched Brother Rich grow up over there. You know, when they was trying to find their way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But it do I did all that debating in the joint. I debated with all of them. I debated with the Moors. I debated with the Nation of Islam, with um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Christians, and they all don't realize that before 1492, none of that stuff that had nothing to do with us. Well, let me ask you this, though. You started talking about voodoo and voodoo. For some reason, mm -hmm tend to think that all of that came from Africa. Um, with all of the spiritual situations that have come from over here in the United, I'm um, excuse me, over here in, in America. So do you do you also believe or feel like all of the voodoo came from Africa? No. First of all, it, it wasn't called voodoo in Africa. Well, and it's still well. not called Vadoon in Africa, well, but Vodun. it's the same science of the earth. Mm -hmm. All shamans have a piece. That's why we got to use the wind talker channel so that when certain chiefs come, he can communicate with so many other chiefs to get their piece to put together the solution to whatever the problem is, no matter what it is. Every problem got a solution. Every problem got a solution. 
Well, let me ask you one more question before I, I hand it over to Delsine or Anisha. We're still waiting for Dots to come in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me see what this question was. Why? Why do you think that our people have such a problem with accepting that our people was all melanated people, was all over the world, and that they were not all from Africa, and that, that some people are from America that were of dark hue. Why do you think that our people have a problem in accepting that particular situation? Because we, because we too dark to tell them the truth. Our skin complexion doesn't match the 500 years of an inundation with pale faces as truth holders. So when we come, they tell you, oh, I don't want hear that black shit. Or they tell you, oh, you just you just talking that Islam stuff. It's, they don't got nothing to do with Islam. Islam Arab culture. No, that's not got nothing to do with us. They drug that over here. Right? And, yeah. And a, they don't even know what it is. The people practicing Islam have no clue what Islam is. Only the Sufis know the truth that's willing to tell it. But they all think that the Sufi is crazy. And they tell the average Muslim to avoid the Sufi because they heretics. They don't believe that Allah, they believe in Allah. But because they was threatened with death, they teach it as Allah, but they know what it is in truth. When they talk about the Hijra, the Hijra is the march of the matriarchs. That's what all the elephants represented. They don't even know that. Right? And then it's telling you about the birds that flew in and dropped the, the burning stones on them that ate your flesh. Those were um, bombs. Those were bombs they was dropping from planes. But they have us thinking that Orville Wright, the Wright brothers, Invented the plane. The plane they've been flying around Earth for thou for millions of years. All of a sudden, they think all this stuff is new. Ain't nothing new under the sun. We did all this stuff before. We gonna do it again. All we do as eternal beings is trying to find a cause for existence. So we need something to do for eternity. So we allow civilizations to rise and run their lifespan and fall. This is the last leg of the Babylonian Empire. Why do we say Babylonian Empire? Because the forces that's holding these fictitious governments in place trace all the way back to Babylon. Through Rome, through Greece, to Babylon. Right? So if Babylon's doctrines is the doctrines that's ruling the world, then we have to be aware of what their doctrines is. They call it the rights of sin or sin rights, named after ninner sin. But they got you thinking that sin is a verb. It's something that you do. They don't tell you that sin is one of the gods. Mm. And that if you a sinner, you practice his doctrines. Well, what is his doctrines? See, all of these intelligent scholars, they know a lot of stuff, but they don't know what it means. <laughs> to me, to be easy. a sinner, you have to be a practitioner of what we call seeing rights. Mm -hmm. That's Babylonian blood magic, Babylonian sex magic, and Babylonian money magic. They was passed in the Talmud and the Mishnah in pieces. And part of it is in the Torah. Right. And they have other extant so-called Jewish writings like the Holy Sephirah or the Kabbalah. That's all telling you what the sin rights is. So now, you know, when you take communion, why you a sinner? Because you practice in the Babylonian blood, right? A simulated cannibalism. As long as you simulate in the cannibalism and you believe that you consume in a deity, then you hold in the, the construct in place with your energy, even if you don't know what it means. 
So they tell you to eat of his flesh and to drink of his blood. Mm -hmm. Right? And they tell us that he drank from the holy chalice. He was the carpenter's son, but he drank from a holy chalice. And everybody like, it's, it's a cup. No, the holy chalice is the chalice of the chaste woman, which is the design of a garment that she wore that covered up her holy parts, her sacred yoni. But we, won't, we don't know what none of that stuff means, so we take the white man's lies to be the truth. That's just not the case. So going through the schools that I went through, I was able to see from a different perspective because I wasn't influenced by the educational system enough for them to control how I think. So the so, arrested development didn't work. So what you're saying is, okay, you know how a lot of times you be on different platforms and they say source up. In mm -hmm. my mind, you're telling me to source up, but I can only source up with the enemy's information. Ninety so percent of the time, correct? Or yeah. if it's not correct, everything is played on and twisted up lies. So why? How can so? And then our people have the audacity to say source up. And if you do source up, they get to say, for some reason, all oh, that source is not strong enough because they don't agree with whatever the narrative is that they want you to fall into. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Yeah. And I'm, I'm saying when it says source up, you want me to source up with the enemy's information about our people? So you're not going to tell me. So either way it go, I got to accept your lies. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why I say all the time is how can you say that we're all African? Not that I have a problem with any, any of our African brothers and sisters, because I still consider them as our brothers and sisters. Cause we, because we would because we could be a descendant in some kind of way, but that still does not negate that our families could have came from this side of the world. So when I'm speaking with my Pan-African brothers and sisters, and that's what they are to me, um, I could ask a question. And the question, they'll tell me, Sister Freedom, you're wrong. And I'm and I'm just asking a question. I'd be like, how am I wrong? I'm just I'm just asking a question. Um, I'm a Pan-African. This asks me the same question, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. The, the question that I always ask, and I'm going to continue on asking the same question. Explain to me in the 14 and 1500s how wooden boats went over to Atlantic Ocean it would take 90 days. I mean, it had to be a horrible, horrible ride. You got four and 500 people on the boat. How did you feed them? Where did they use the bathroom? And how did you give them water? And if you tell me they use the bathroom all over each other, that means the immune system would had to be weak. The smell alone, you could not eat. Who was going downstairs? To, who was going down in the bottom where they were chained up to feed them? Yeah. Who was going See, down there to unchain them to come that's up? A, that's a challenge to the paradigm given that they never thought that we would be able to critically think enough to just analyze the narrative to determine if it was reasonable. Why would you bring all the people for Africa when it was people already here? Already here. And they came over here and invaded this land with all of the people on here that was of melanated hue. And we know that to be true because we heard Christopher Columbus say in his, in his information that when he got over here, he's seen people who look like people from another place that he came from. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, why would they waste their time going over into Africa to get people to bring over here when there's already people here that look the same, pretty much. They ain't probably look all together the same, but they had the same, at least, skin color. I mean, because this is what I'm saying, Rod. We over here, our, our culture has been stolen from us over here. Our lands were stolen over here. You understand? Our culture was stolen over here because we no longer claim to be tribal people. 
You understand me? There are some that have captured it and, and you know, the tribal names they call Indian or Aboriginal, you know what I mean? Or indigenous. And we can't hide from them now. This is the age of information. It's all going to come out. So what I'm saying is, when I talk to my friends in Africa, they still have their names. They still have their land. And even if they became Christian or even um, Islamic, or Muslims, if, if that's what you want to call them, they still know their tribal way of life. They still speak the tongue of their parents. I'm tr I'm trying to figure it out. When I well, hear the parent, my brothers and sisters that pan African talk, they say, "No, because we got our land stolen. We have our names stolen." Okay, one you know? of the one of the problems I got with them keep telling me my land stolen. I keep walking on it everywhere I go. Part of part of the theft has to be the concealment. Where is the concealment part of the theft? That's what they need to be trying to investigate. Because if we still see the land, then that means that it's another method of concealment for them to steal it. What are they concealing that is allowing them to hold on to the land? And they're the visitors. They're the yeah. ones that came over here on this land. See, from over here, from the paradigm of an organic Mississippi walking red clay dirt Negro, they want us to claim to be from Africa to disassociate ourselves from this land. Because once we disassociated from the land, we surrender the birthright. Absolutely. I agree 100%. If you know who you are, and you asserting your birthright on the land that you from while you living free on the land, they have to uh, honor that. But most of us want to accept the paradigm that was shoved down our throats in 400 years of Westerners educating our children as to what's to be accepted as the truth or not. It's a uniform system. This you can't get that out the out your head. It's a uniform system. It's written in a uniform format to follow the uniform commercial code of the admiralty jurisdiction of the occupiers that's occupying our land. They didn't steal it. They just convinced you you wasn't from it. It's still <laughs> here, and you still, the, the sisters have the first right to the birthright of the earth rights. What that mean is by mitochondrial connection, first in time is first in order. This is why they say um, the last shall be made first and the first shall be made last because the first was already playing the back position, the last position. Malcolm told you we was the caboose on the train. What is he telling you in tribal talk versus the common language? So the, the now we have to put the caboose as the engine because the engine broke down. Now the caboose is leading the train as the engine because it was really the engine the whole time. It was just the engine being drug around by another engine. So if the last becomes first that mean that the so-called white man's world falls down and the black woman world return well we call it the black woman world because she's first in time first in land for the inheritance of the earth right the earth right is the right to restore the balance to earth's nature air land and water that's the great law the earth rights, R I T E S, is the practice of executing the restoration by restoring the great mother to her position in, of prominence. This is the only way earth can be balanced. It's the only way it's ever been balanced under the, the great matriarchy of the great mother. Every 26,000 years, we have to rewrite the future. And over the course of the 26,000 years, the what started out as a golden age will deteriorate. 
because it's following the laws of nature and that's called entropy. It can't stay a permanent system because nothing in nature is permanent. Everything rise up, fall down, rise up, fall down, ebb and flow. Right? The blood of the original people is the blood right to redeem. Whether y'all believe me or not, these people know who every one of us is. They've been following us since birth. They followed our parents and our grandparents. And it's certain families that they kept the closest watch on because those were the heirs that had the right to take everything from the enemies that's squatting on the land as a military occupational um, regime masquerading as our government, right? So when we assert our birthright, it don't matter. I don't, I don't care if you don't, if I don't know none of my ancestors, I know who I am. And I know where I'm from first in time, first in order, right? I'm the firstborn of the earthborn parthogenic son of the great mother. So whenever it get out of control and can't nobody fix it, mama call her baby boy. Okay. <laughs> So if they don't know what that means, they better go ask their Masonic brothers. Because they're going to tell them, if you're telling me what, to, if he's saying that what he told you, that would mean Hiram is raised and he's walking. They don't know who Hiram is. The, the Masons know what I'm talking about. Right? Because Hiram Abiff, the master builder, is the one who have to exhume the great mother from the shrine of the Black Madonna. Why do they call it that? Right? He in the tomb, she in the shrine. That's a two-bar cane in the four-corner shuffle. That's a seven-sister seal, Pleiadian knot. This is our code that we all used to know when we have uh, meetings with each other on foreign parts of the land that we ain't from as a visitor. But now, it sounds foreign to our people when you're using the foreign language, but you're using our code to talk it. All of, all of the lodges know what's up. I don't care if they don't never show up. They know what the real deal is. They know that they came over here messing with these feather-wearing uh, Afro chiefs, and they got their they tails handed to them. Right? Tupac talk about it all through his music, but don't nobody know what he's saying in the cold talker language, but they know what he's saying in English, in the colloquial language of the hood, but he talking cold talk too. Biggie was too. ODB was too. These chiefs. But they can't come up through the traditional leadership roles because the leadership roles been usurped. And anybody that try to rise up and politics or anything of that matter, activism, this murder. And if they figure out that we're talking to each other, they gonna try to murder us until one of us claim the birthright before they can murder us. Now they gotta listen to them even if they don't want to. And the process is to look up pretender to the throne. There's a process as a pretender to the throne you have to go through to claim your, your throne. If you don't know what the process is and it's above your pay grade. Right. Over here, the chiefs have a certain way to raise a chief to prominence. If you don't know what it is, that's above your pay grade. Your spiritual rank ain't high enough to know what's going on. So now you're running around using what they what the uh, pale face told you in the book as your source. And the worst of the misleaders is they look like us. Because the people we fighting the whole time, they brought all of this war to our doorstep and swore to never surrender and for hold us as our eternal enemy. We didn't swear no ill will to them people. They done that to us. Our big mamas took them in and fed them when they came on them ships. And what they do? They massacred us. And then they told us it was somebody else with a pale face. The original French, Dutch, Portuguese, and Irish that came over here, they wasn't buttermilk complexion. 
But we don't know that because them the lies they tell in the books when they rewrite history. Dots probably have a question for you. Hey, Dots, you here? Sorry about that. The audio wasn't audioing, okay? I don't know what was oh, going on. We hear you loud and clear now. You sound good, yeah, looking good. I had to switch my device. I do apologize. I apologize. Um, okay. So you know what? Let me let me say. You know, I think that birthright is the best primary, secondary, tertiary source any person could have, right? I hear a lot of, you know, the comebacks usually is like, you know, so what's up with your source? Like, you know, what sources do you have? Um, X, Y, and Z. And it's like, you're looking right at it. Because last time that I checked, the sources that have been in books have been changed over time. The information that have been written in a lot of these books and a lot of the information that's cited from quote unquote scholars have been adapted, evolved, changed, modified. However, you want to switch that and remix it. It's been updated. The software, it's been updated. So in my opinion, when someone's comeback is, what's up with the sources, or you don't have any sources, or what's your viable, very viable source, that's cute. But I'm it. You're looking at it. It don't get any better than that. You right? You, you can't get any better than if you're asking me about me, I can tell you about me. You can't tell me about me. So I always say, you know, especially now, like I am never, ever concerned or worried about trying to prove or change a person's mind. And I think it's a wonderful thing if a person does change your thinking. I know my thinking has changed. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's what you're supposed to do as a human being. Right. Um, but th that's what you made me think of. My question, though, is since you we are talking about the, you know, women, you know, what would you say? How would a woman activate? her divinity and consciousness and i know that's a loaded question but i just want to see how you answer that she have to learn how to read her emotions and she'll have a literal blueprint to ascension most women the ones that they call toxic don't learn to read their emotions they use their emotions to fly off the handle about whatever it is when your emotions giving you more information once you learn how to read it, it can get a navigation system. Another thing is talk to your uterus. If you a woman, clap your hands, clasp your hands together over your uterus. Close your eyes, relax, and just say, Big Mama, tell me whatever I need to know. It's Jesus on the main line because Jesus is ISIS. The main line is the uterus. It's a portal of life that's only seen in creation. So if it's a portal, it don't matter what your skin complexion is. Now, once you got that uterus on earth, you have power to talk to prime source if you tap into that energy. Right. Another thing is raise your vibration by not feeding into low vibrational activity. You start to walk in what's called your earth angel form. And you can tell the women that do that because they can be old as hell, but they look still look like a teenager in the face. She like a gray haired teenager. Right. Because they take care of themselves spiritually in that spiritual light. It corrects the beauty flaws. Right. So you have to also be aware of the fact that when you ground in with the earth, the earth's mitochondrial is talking to the mitochondrial in the woman. It's y'all trading information on birth defects, how to get rid of them. Y'all going over how to um, manage the Y chromosome. All this is taking place in the mitochondrial communication between earth and women. The Y chromosome is a mutation. So it has to be regulated by something that's not mutated in order for it to have its optimum performance. And that responsibility goes to the mitochondria while the woman is gestating. And this is why she don't always make every Y active. And sometimes when it was would have came in as a boy, she overrode it and said, nope, the DNA is, is, is faulty. This one's gonna have to be a girl to correct the error. This is all done within the woman. 
in the uterus, between the uterus and the queen's chamber in the brain, where the pineal gland sit. The understanding of the self, it gives you the highest access to your power. And when you realize that y'all little earths walking around on earth, but you're also children of the stars. Because everything in creation is made up of accumulated stardust. That's how we got here. That's what makes things solid. The accumulated stardust. It forms into our soils and our rocks, and it eventually bursts out as flora and fauna. It's the women who decided what, how to decorate Earth with the different flora and fauna. Or else we just had one bland, uniform plant for everything that don't work for everything. The diversity came from interacting and communicating with people from other places to put the proper flora and fauna. That's how come the women knew. If you go back and listen to Credo Mutua, he say it was our mothers who went out into the field and tested all of the plants to determine what was used for healing and what was used for killing, right? Because some plants to kill you dead and some plants to make you whole. But you got to know the difference in the ones. And the women was the ones who came up with herbology. They was already here doing herbology before they decided to produce a Y chromosome. Yeah, sure did. So your first medicine man was actually a medicine woman. Your first shamans was actually a priestess. Walk in the land. Some women is so um, disturbed in the self, they're supposed to be by themselves. This, uh, this is why you got the, always got the story of the old lady living in the, in the woods in a little hut by herself. They call her the witch of the woods. But that was, just, she just was too volatile to be in the community, so they kicked her out. Her energy was pure chaos. The women didn't allow toxic women to infect they, they clean. That's not the man's job. It's the women's job to oust the, the, the rotten rogue women. And it's the men's job to correct the bad men. So it, part of their system is stopping the good men from correcting the bad men with the force of the government. You know what, Brad? You just said something. You said something about shamas. And right here in this book that I happen to find, can you see that Native mm -hmm. American secrets? I just happened to come across this book at the farmer's market. I think I might have paid a dollar for it, but it says something right here about the shamans, the shamans, the makers of miracles. Same thing what you're talking about right now. It has a whole bunch of spirituality, healing, and everything in this book. This book is powerful. Just I actually got that book. book. It's in my collection. I like this thing here on it. But not everything can, you know, not everything is told, right? And, and that's not everything is told. And You're everything right. can't be shared, and everything can't be told. And a lot of those, um, see that word, a, a lot of the medicines and a lot of the, um, you know, concoctions, if you will, or the tonics. Yes, a lot of that stuff, you know, is oral. You know what I'm saying? Gets passed down. Um, <laughs> And so I want to ask you a follow-up question to that, just in terms of it, because, you know, nowadays here, well, listen, here, in the, you know, when you hear the word smoking or whatever, you know, call me a ganja farm. I'm going to just let you know what it is right now. But because, no, really, but on some... I'm moving with you. <laughs> like, I'm, a tobacco, I'm a tobacco marijuana chief. So, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right. But go ahead with the question so they can... For real, for real, call me a ganja farm. And so, um, <laughs> but I also... <laughs> But the reason why I say that is because, you know, when I was growing up, I would have you right before my, my Nana, you know, she would make a lot of teas and, and tonics or whatever. And when we would have, like when she would want to cleanse, let's say somebody was sick or what have you, you know, she would go to the bush and she would get some ganja, ganja, get some of the ganja leaves or what have you, and she would make it into a tea. A lot of people think of when you smoke ganja now or what have you right that it's just maybe just to get high or maybe for entertainment value or factor but there's some real medicinal um effects to it number one um i know that for a fact 
can you do you can you speak a little bit about you know how smoking was ritualized or used in rituals especially when it comes to fertility um when it comes to cleansing um etc 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 the first thing that you need to know is what is your endocannabinoid system you have endocannabinoid receptors in all your organs all through your brain the endocannabinoid system is the glue or the link between your spirit body and your physical body the shaman's been aware of this for thousands of years western science is only just now discovering the endocannabinoid system the um marijuana chiefs is the ones to that use it for psychic um facilitation to allow your psychic senses to become active because the world around us is at a stress level that it drowns out your psychic voices in your head so the ganja is a one of the methods you use to break down the surrounding environment and to enhance the internal dialogue we've been doing this for thousands of years it's not new to us and also um if you remember every time they went to go sign the treaty they had to smoke the peace pipe why because the ganja make you a built-in lie detector good point yeah so if they come in with the treaty and they telling us it mean one thing but it means something else and you make him smoke that ganja he can't lie to you especially when you put him in the middle of two or three chiefs because they standing on truth and the lie becomes almost impossible to stand up in the presence of truth so you smoke the ganja to make the psychic sympathetic link so when he started to tell that lie you can say you're going to turn your mouth to tell me that lie you about to say i already know that's when they came up with the term pale face speak with forked tongue hmm. that don't mean he lie but everybody think it mean he lie it don't mean he lie it means he's talking for two people he talking for himself and he talking for the one sinning that mm. splits the tongue so the chiefs knew this so he tell pale face what do you want versus what the people that had sent you want you to have this is how we was able to get pale face to assist us and every time we tried to rise up we was facilitated by pale faces and we was cut down by chocolate nappy head negroes hmm. then mark vasey he was he was assisted by a pale face who died with him gabriel prosser was assisted by a pale face nigga told on him <laughs> well so everywhere we go cointel pro the panthers was infiltrated by nappy head negroes that you and the nation of Islam was infiltrated by nappy head Negroes. Didn't no pale face infiltrate the nation. And this is how you know that when they killed Malcolm, pale face didn't want nothing to do with that. Because he knew that's the wrong one for us to touch. Let them ones that's telling us to kill him, kill him. We the French told us when he tried to land in France when he was going to Mecca when they said we don't want your blood over here we don't want no parts of that and Malcolm knew he was being followed over there Nation of Islam wasn't following him over there who was following him mm. there was those people that look like us that's running everything behind the scenes they control everybody think that the cia the kgb and the mossad different organizations they are the same they want us to pay attention to the war in gaza why it's a distraction it don't got nothing to do with us 
You know what, Ron? You know what? That's a really forming that connection for the for those who are on the Pan African doctrine, for example. Because when you think about it, like in order, you know, I'm thinking like as powerful and 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 big and strong as a landmass as that continent is, for example, over in Africa, right? You mean to tell me that you got a group of people, I don't care how many, could have been hundreds of them, I don't, but they're strong enough to come inland, grab thousands of people. Okay. Go ahead, girl. And not get this work. And not get this work on the way out. What do you do that? Say it, girl. I not only that. We just talked about that earlier. When they have needed, in order for things like that to happen in mass, in scale, if we're going along with the story, um, and I'm being very respectful, so please understand, I'm not being disrespectful when when I'm speaking to anybody that may be hearing my voice. But I'm just trying to say, because it often sometimes comes across like a TV novella, right? And and so with, with all the action. So you mean to tell me that you have these foreigners, right? These strange people coming in, Right. Not get, being able to kidnap, rape, slaughter, what have you, right? Come out the bush, come onto these wicked ships, right? They need help. Wouldn't they need help? So that also means that they kinfolk was assisting. It would have to. These foreigners and doing this. The first thing we got to realize is the same Chocolate co complexion, nappy head, Babylonians is the same ones infiltrated them, was the same ones infiltrated us. If we, if we don't never put that together, we won't understand because it was a scramble for Africa under the Berlin Conference that divided that landmass up and drew the name Africa, which is an Arabic word, Ifraka, which means to divide up. They named it that because of the, they didn't name it after Scipio Africanus. They didn't name it after Leo Africanus. It's named after the events of the Berlin Conference in Arabic because it was some dirty Moors behind the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yo, the Moors, they're getting this work. Yo, what's the Moors? Y'all, something else. I'm glad you said that because we said that talking on the phone earlier. Yeah. Exactly. So, look, we, you, the, we went into the war using catch terms to classify groups of us the catch term more it could if it's encompassing more than just one group of people right this is why we say righteous more dirty more because it was under the banner of more that we was fighting the kanja war the 200 years war of george washington where it was challenged to bring a ceasefire to the Gullah Wars for the Mississippians to go into a Kanja war against those ones from Europe that got exiled. There weren't pink people getting exiled out of Europe in the Spanish Inquisition. They was exiled in the Moors. In the French Revolution, they was fighting the Moors, the black nobility of Europe that lived in Switzerland. You can't live there no more. Ain't nowhere safe for them, nowhere on the planet. Right? They didn't turn the militaries of all of the, the countries that's fighting for freedom ag against the cabal. The same ones. It was a, it's an ancient royal family. Right? They've been doing this for years. It, they time is up. They had 6,000 years to, to run their tyranny. It's over. And I'm the last chief to come and say it's over before y'all see the result of it being over. Well, let me say this to you. Okay. People act like, cause they forget that there's water and that we've been going back and forth. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I know Dustin there was going to go on in this. And I don't mean to take Nisha or Dustin there's turn because I, I just want to scoop this. So when Dustin is go into it, cause she going to say something about that DNA. So we going back and forth. The Moors are showing Christopher Columbus how to get over here, and we going back and you know, like going back and forth. Yeah, because you know they did Liberia, and what if somebody from Africa married somebody over here? Of course, they going back, gonna go with their husband over there, even if it's an American person. Now they over here in Africa. You understand? I'm just trying to make a scenario. I'm with you. I'm with you. When they do the DNA, it's very possible that they can have DNA 
from because they don't just have it in one part. They'll snag go in on that because they don't just have it from one part. Listen, of the, it's the, the, all over the place of Africa. The DNA is the biggest fraud of this century. It's for entertainment purposes. The people that run it tell you it's for entertainment purposes only and that it's not accurate. Only The only DNA that's real accurate is parental determination. They don't test the same amount of genetic material to find your ancestry that they do for parental verification. And it's easier to find the markers of a parent than it is 10 grandparents back. Right? So every child got two parents, four grandparents, eight great uh, great grandparents, 16 great great grandparents, uh, 32 great 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 grandparents. Okay, now which one of them from Africa? And then what happened when they amalgamate with the dark skinned, woolly haired tribes of this land? How how much DNA material is expressed in 10 generations? See, the royal families of the earth understood what the European didn't find out until the development of what's called the Habsburg's gene and the uh, um, uh, hemophilia, uh, the hemophiliacs that caused the War of the Roses. They didn't know that you have to marry into different royal families of the world if you're going to be having incest or else the genetics will become corrupted. So what did we do? Princesses and princes from over here was chiefs and junior chiefs was marrying in Africa all up and down the seaboard of the eastern coast all in the islands. This is not new, but they want us to believe that we just started encountering each other in 1492. Right. But Ivan Van Sertima wrote, they came before Columbus that shows you our interaction with peoples of Africa long before Columbus sailed. Right? So we already know historically we have Royal families over here marrying African royal families on the eastern seaboard. The western seaboard, we have records of marrying Asians in trade across the Pacific to diversify the genetics. This is why we look so many different native appearances. And this is why when they brought their slaves, they was able to send them to Indian school to impersonate us. Because some of us look Asian. Because we had Asians in our blood. This is where we all got Lee in our name from. Bertie Lee, Arthur Lee, Henry Lee. <laughs> right? All and different. right. The, the name become popularized because it's the connection of the tribes in the Americas with tribes from Asia long ago before Columbus ever was born. But we don't know what that stuff means because we don't know the culture no more. See, once they once they start trying to corrupt the culture and fighting the war on the culture, they what they can figure out how to divorce us from the land by making us forego our reading our culture and understanding our own movements as a people. Right? They, they have the maps of them moving the, the, the North American slave trade where they was taking us from the north, taking us to the south, telling us we from Africa. <laughs> they was taking us from Louisiana to the islands, telling us we from Africa. Shuffling us around like we don't know who we be. We know who we be. They just don't know. DMX told them they don't know who we be. But we know because we have various ways to communicate beyond the common measures that they gave us. They think we can only communicate by talking. I could feel the chief on another side of the country if you want me to. If you're trying to get a message to me. 
And then I'll get some kind of event in the physical world to show me that he's talking to me for real and it's not my imagination. Right. Nisha, I know you got a question for him. I do not. Um, mm -mm. That's an L. Go ahead. Y'all see how you are going to go. Um, so uh, going back to what you were saying as far as the old glory flag and you were talking about the different places that were already here, the different nations that were going down under are the different cities that we know uh, that the massacres or that they were targeting under that old glory flag. Can you go a little bit further into that history of, you know, who were the people they were going against in the Rosewood massacre or when they took down Seneca Falls or different things like that? Do we know the people? Do we know uh, what groups of people they were? Yeah, though, uh, most of the wars that we was fighting, when it first started, it was the ones in exile from Europe coming over here. And the ones that were in exile, we just so happened today to call them Moors. They was once called Etruscans. And then they became Tuscans or Tuscanians. And this is the settlement in what became Rome as they established Rome as an extension of their empire. When they got kicked out of Europe, they needed a homeland. Ain't that the story of the Jews? They got exiled and needed a homeland, so Yahweh promised them a homeland because they didn't have one of their own. What God going to create somebody that don't that's not native to nowhere on the planet? That God ain't from this planet. That got to be somebody else God. Because the God of the earth know where everybody on earth belong if they from earth. And it talked through the earth to the goddesses of the earth first. This is why all of the best information is channeled through sisters better than a book. If you learn how to read, if a man learn how to read his woman emotions and stop trying to do all that secret squirrel cool pimp daddy shit, they a powerhouse together. This is what they don't want because we knew this before they came and we used it and they discovered it, what we was using. So they started murdering off the women that was married to the chiefs and marrying and murdering the chief till it ain't nobody up seasoned enough to deal with the problem. So now we got to learn how to communicate with women all over again, because the way that they teaching us how to communicate is totally destructive to our entire community. It's all about communication that we have our problems. If we understand who we is as a people, we get to overcome the obstacle of what they told us versus what we know to be true. We know everything, especially the sisters, because y'all got direct rec access to Akashic Records, right? That's why I say, when you learn how to talk to your uterus, you don't need nobody to tell you nothing at that point. That's big mama training because some women take years to learn how to effectively use that method. But once she do, hmm. she have direct source influence in her life and she's going to be able to move stuff that couldn't formerly be moved with common means in the immediate environment. This is why when they start activating laws of nature, like if you watch a mama bear defending her cubs, she'll fight off a male bear three times her size and her ferocity, nature turns her ferocity up higher than he is so that she'll stand a fighting chance to protect her babies. This is the law of nature. And the women of the earth got a right at the close of every age to restore the matriarchy and to prepare for the next seven generations to come. 
and it's a baton race and it's carried on from there until entropy sets in and the society decays again as it is now. Totally, totally screwed up. Well, you finished, Dulcinea? Yes. Dulcinea? Okay. Um, I want to say I'm glad that I did get that book down um, Farmer's Market because I just looked that book up on Amazon. It is $50, $54. I'm glad I found it down. <laughs> they had that book for no $55. Uh-uh. That's the same. How? Stuff like that is how our ancestors talk to us. Right. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't have, I would just not have that book. <laughs> yeah, but look, your okay. ancestors knew that that book had some information that you needed, so it put it in the place that you're going to come at a price you can easily afford for you to access the information without the traditional black methods like overpricing. What were you saying, Dots? I couldn't hear you. No, I was, um, I didn't mean to interrupt. Nisha, there was Nisha saying, uh, Nisha saying anything before I go? Because I want to ask him a question. It's, it's on no, you, Dots. Oh, okay, perfect. Sorry about that, y'all. It's my right. turn. <laughs> it's always your turn, freedom. Okay. All right, good question. Um. I'm Rod. It, it was my turn. I was just saying. Oh, I, was, oh, oh, oh. I thought you were joking. My bad. You got it, baby. Go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back to this DNA uh, situation so people can understand that long ago we traveled because we did trading. Am I correct to say that, Rod? Yeah, that's true. We did a lot of trading in different areas. So it's very possible even though I'm not with the DNA thing, that if anybody from off these lands went over into Africa or into um, China or anywhere, if they took the DNA, it's very possible that you could be related to somebody in Africa. Now, here's my other question, the main question. There's been a lot of talk about Egypt. And um, even when um, Taj was on... Taj was saying something about Egypt and us here in America. What is the connection from America to Egypt? Egypt was set up by Tahuti. Okay. Tahuti is the one who set up the Temple of Isis in Arizona before Egypt was ever thought about. And the original Temple of Isis, Arizona, the original Sphinx is all weathered and beaten down, but the artifacts are still there. The same temple priests that he took to Egypt spread out all over the world. And they was putting pieces to the earth, earth history all over the world. It was temple priests that set up what we call today the Hindu civilization. It was mm -hmm. temple priests that set up the ancient Ainu civilization in Japan. It was temple priests that organized the Mongolians and gave them civilization. These temple priests all came from what we call today Central America, from Tiwakan, from um, Titicaca, and from... Um, and uh, I forgot the name of the other one. But where you see the Great Pyramids of the Americas in Central America, we have mounds and pyramids all over the Americas. There's the Great Black Pyramid in, in Alaska. Right. There's another a couple more of them that look like mountains um, in the Rockies. But you can't tell that they're not pyramids because they're covered with trees. Right. So this is the history before Egypt. Egypt was set up because they was doing some stuff in the Middle East. It's mm -hmm. the Middle East now, but it was once called Goshen, which means the extreme provinces of Egypt or Kemet. It got the name Egypt from the Greeks calling the people Egyptos, which means burnt faces. And they called the people of Ethiopia Ethiops which means dark faces or black faces, 
right? So um, the Aethiops was a mispronunciation of the term for Ethiopia, which is the nine ether science, right? So we're talking about what's known as black root science. There's pieces to the black root science and all of the cultures. And if you don't know all of the cultures, you can't never get all of the pieces. And therefore, you can't never act, uh, activate the divine name. Right. So they call it the great Ennead. But first, you have to get the great Agdad active. These is all Egyptian um mysteries that most people have no clue what they mean they just think they sound good because they can say some hieroglyphic stuff in english but that's the source of kemet and its knowledge in the temple priests when they told us they burned down the library in alexandria those were all copies the uh, the library was moved by tunnel to the vatican long before the fire ever started, right? Because those documents needed to be available for the future. And we are gonna be able to send researchers in there to go get our real history out. Over here, a lot of us don't know this, but the tribal histories is kept in caves um, in national parks. That's why a lot of us can't find our true history because they put it away out of our sight mm -hmm. we have history just like they got history it just ain't written in english and some of it has been um translated over time mm -hmm. that's now you can ask your question thank you okay <laughs> um pardon me y'all i'm being greedy and i'm eating um Okay, so back to the women, the woman thing real quick. Do you think, because you were speaking about the unlocking, um, the you know, just, just the power that a woman has. Okay, so do you think that every woman born has the capacity, depending on, has the capacity to do that? Do you think that it, by just, so a, per, a, a baby that's born, that's biologically female, okay? Do you think that she has the ability, has the capacity to unlock, you know, her power and the way in which you speak? Or do you think that it, it that, no, you know what? Let me not leave. Let, let, I'll follow up with the second piece. That's my question. <clears throat> so um, if they earth born and they can, and they fertile and they can make a baby and carry a baby, they can talk to source through their uterus. It's a direct line. And no matter what what part of the earth she's from, as long as she's earth born, mm -hmm. she can ground out and talk to her uterus, talk to source. They any earth born woman that can produce a child has it. Some of them had hysterectomies can still do it using the spiritual, what they call phantom limb. And do you think that that depending on where she's from, what nation she's a part of, right? Do you think that that has anything to do with her ability to tap in? Well, some women didn't know how to tap it. Those specifically the ones from Europe. This is one of the reasons they came here. If you go back to the, to the uh, witch hunt, you will see that the big mamas was teaching them what's known as Yoni magic. And they was killing all of the pale faced women that was being taught because, and the big mama that was teaching them, right? Because they didn't want them to have that same access to source data, but they can still uh, communicate using the uterus if they know the science. Okay. Well, we're going to get ready to drop the link because I know you only told us you only have a couple hours that you could spend with us. And I know Straight Eight wanted to ask you a question. Is that okay with you? Cool. Straight 
straight smoke. Did you drop the link or you want did you drop it or you want me to drop it or we can go to we can go to open QA. I don't got no problem. I know how to say I know how to say I don't know if I don't know something. I don't know. Right. All right. We can sure. drop it or however. You want me to drop it? I'll I'll drop it. Okay, go ahead. Um only because I knew there was a few uh questions one yes, of the y'all yes. have a lot to say. Come, come, don't be scared. Come hit the link. <laughs> Straight smoke. <Bye. laughs> Anybody that got a question? So the re so while we're waiting for them to come up, the reason why I was asking you that, Rod, is because you know, I know that the teachings that my that that my big mama taught us, right? And mm -hmm just the very fabric in, in, in person, like who I am is definitely different than some of the others. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. If you get my, well, y'all got y'all no? remember first in time is first in land. Y'all have access to stuff from the melanin that other nations right. can access. Right. Melanin is what we call auto sentient. It's, it's conscious by itself. Right. And the skin melanin allows the melanin to have a broader reception range. You got a larger surface area to draw in data. Right. So that was that was the context in which I was asking. Because mm -hmm. it is different. It's different. There is a there is a difference in um because there's it's like dimensional travel. It's like levels almost. It's levels to this, you know? Yeah. That's what it is. This level city. This level city shit all day. Mm. That's a fact. Thank you for coming up, straight smoke. Um, and and Rod, whenever after uh straight smoke asks his question, I still got one more question I want to ask you right after straight smoke. Can you hear me? As always, how y'all doing on Scramble Minds? It's good to see you. Salute to you, Rod Hayes. I really like what you was dropping. That's that's for real, for real, for real. I wanted to ask uh, uh, one serious question because um, <clears throat> me, myself, I'm going on being 20 years married. So I do know the importance of matriarchal systems, especially having daughters, things of that nature that always show younger women how to become women. So my question for you would be that, <clears throat> how did we stray away so hard? Um, it was collateral damage from warfare. It ain't that we strayed away, it's that we went into a war and the enemy used our culture to attack us by reversing it on us. And then they gave us a foreign culture as if it was actually our culture. That's I understand what, we what you. At. I understand what you're saying, but um, <clears throat> it's just hard for me to conceive that someone can pull the wool over someone's eyes that strong and that long to not wake up out of a slumber of that 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 sickness. You understand that was what a I conscience. mean? But you understand that was, what I'm that was an actual conjure. It was a 200 year amnesia that was uh, created. It's called I call it the George Washington Challenge because it was done in the Masonic lodges in um, Philadelphia, but they had to move the capital to D.C. The conjure was a secondary constitution that was written in the blood of Crispus, Crispus Atticus to lock us under that constitutional paradigm. And, and the side effect is they killed off our elders and they mistaught us to give us amnesia. Are you talking about the kilt conjure? The what? The kilt conjure. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, okay. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. What is the kilt conjure then? Can you? That's that's something that's in these Masonic. Uh, I got a lot of people that's Masons in my family. So, you know, by me 
not wanting to be a part of it. And they always try to sub subsequently make me want to be a part of it. And I just, I'm just not with that. But they always keep dropping tidbits of jewels and things like that. So when I do my research about the things that they're talking about, and it's, it's ironic that he will bring that up because in that in that particular lodge, that's exactly what they call it, the kilt conjure. Yeah, that, that might be it because it was done by 30 straight smoke. That might be exactly it because it was performed by 32 degrees Scottish Rite Freemasons. So that might be the, the Masonic name for it. Correct. Correct. That, that's that is what's yes. ne ne that's what I, that's what I wanted to. Okay. Hey, uh, I'm mad. That's exactly some what technical I wanted to issues. Say. I got to drop you, out Rod and come Hayes, back in. For real. My, uh, unscramble. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Unscramble Minds. Uh, I'll, I'll drop down. Thank you, Straight Smoke. Well, he had to drop down and come back in, but I think uh, Madon should be next, and then Copper Tone, and then uh, Ebizzle. Hey, Ebizzle. Hey, hey, what's going on, Mom? Hello? Okay. I think that's, yeah, that's better. I can you now. Hey, how you doing, Mom? I'm doing freedom. Yeah. I'm gonna be quiet so they can ask the question. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be cool too. Madon, are you there? Uh yes, PC sisters. Um salute, brother Rod. Um, Who's I got two questions. I got um two questions. Um, my first question is um how do you win talk? And I was curious. Uh I know this one right here might be a little bit off the uh, subject but um are you still are you do you stand paper thin i want to ask that and but my first question was how do you win talk the win talking is something that you you, you learn over time I, like i can't tell you like do this do this do this and you win talking it don't work like that you have to be um it's part of it is in your blood it's telepathic the closest thing you can do to learn is uh control remote viewing so you get a cvr manual control remote viewing manual that the guys who invented or who originally researched it wrote to tell you how to activate your remote viewing that's one of the skills that come with wind talking or cold talking is learning to remote view through time and space and what was your other question uh, my other question was, um, are you still standing paper thin? I don't know what that means, brother. Well, it's it's kind of off topic, but um, I was just asking that. But um, that just some um, something go back to um, I don't even want to announce it, but um, I um, I'll fall back for a minute. But that was my main question. Okay. <laughs> He's copper toned. Thank you for coming up. How are you? You have to unmute. You're still muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can Hi, hear you. Welcome Hello, to Unscramble. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Chief Pontiac, I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. I have uh, two questions. When are you and Dane Callaway going to get together. I'm so waiting for that. Uh, I'm probably more anxious for that than anybody else. <laughs> Man. Um, and also, too, uh, for instance, with, with the Moors, uh, I don't know if you heard of Asir, the Duke of Tears, if you heard him speak before. Okay. He talks about we were Moors before 1492, that we were Moors here. And then, you know, when the Pangea happened, we spread it all over. <laughs> is that, but it seems like it's still a religious thing, but he makes it sound like, ah, that's just what we were. We were called that because we were called, um, you know, other terms too that are only specific that I've heard about describing the Moors and not about us at all. Do you know what a catch? 
Do you know what a catch term is? Yes. Okay. So the word, what? as we see today, M O O R, mm -hmm. was part of the Kanja War. Mm -hmm. And it classified those who was M U U R indigenous and those who was M A U R I foreign under the same banner. Uh. This is how you end up with righteous moors like Sabir Bay. And then you end up with dirty moors. Mm -hmm. The righteous moors know that we from over here and we're going to reclaim our land. Mm -hmm. The dirty moors want to convince us that we foreigners so that they can claim our land and our stead. And that they can, they Yahweh will have found them a homeland. They've waged this war all over the planet. When they settled in Europe, they got kicked out for blood rights, mm -hmm. for adrenochrome harvesting mm -hmm. and cannibalism. Mm -hmm. When they came over here, they were vampires. And because we wear wolves, uh, wolf pelts, our military, one of the totem clans, the black wolf clan, wore black wolf pelts. Mm -hmm. And so they called us werewolves for those who wear the wolf. And they said that we was lichens because we look like kin. Mm. So these is the terms you see in your vampire horror story movie. Right. 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 The zombie is the old voodoo zumbe, mm -hmm. which is the one who is physically present, but his God self is unawakened. Right. But it became sensationalized in Hollywood as a walking dead person. It's not what it means. It means there's a person really? with the guy gene that's not active. Really? He's the Zumbe. And you got to go through a certain ritual to wake you up. Mm -hmm. Which is going into why they wanted us to stay away from the Vadoon because it empowers us mm -hmm. to wake the God self up and they don't want us doing that. It's right. too late. We <laughs> won't. Right. Right. <laughs> why? Yeah. Thank but you. this is how we end up with good moors or righteous moors and dirty okay. moors. Okay. If you Google King Charles the fifth mm -hmm. and go to images, you are looking for an image with King Charles and a whole bunch of Indian chiefs, mm -hmm. right? And then go to <clears throat> George Washington, uh, George Washington Masonic Memorial Museum and type in and put Fezzes behind it. It's gonna pull up a Fez display. Mm -hmm. Those were the Scottish Rite Freemasons and Shriners that came over as masters of the occult sciences. Mm. In the chiefs you see with Charles V, Charles V was a melanated chief, but they painting pale in the pictures. Okay. But he was one of the ones that was of the righteous families that was settled in Europe that was ousting the ones that was eating the babies. Wow. So he he bet the wager on the chiefs. This is why that mural was created. This is all done in the lodges. Saw it's all um blueprints to an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. So when you see the George Washington statement about the 200 years. Mm -hmm we wouldn't know which side of the water we from if they take the fezes from the moors and the sandals from the chiefs. Right. So that group of chiefs are now here reclaiming everything in what we call their descendants. So it comes down, they say beef is inherited and they telling you that for a reason. Mm -hmm. So the totem chiefs come back at the end to fix all of the problems 
and to restore the tribal mothers back to the land. And we work from different fields based on our ability. Everybody not supposed to do the same thing. Because if everybody do the same thing, we couldn't get nothing done. Mm -hmm. So everybody not always supposed to agree. Because if everybody always agreed, we wouldn't get nothing done. Right. It's through the disagreement and the contention that the truth surfaces above the BS. Okay. Right. So Sabir Bay know he tribally from this side of the ocean. Mm -hmm. And he know it's dirty moors. All of the moors know. If you say, "What do they is they do?" Y'all call certain moors dirty moors. They tell you, "Yeah, yep. they do it themselves because they have to identify all of the infiltrators in their ranks." Mm. This is how we know if we infiltrated or not, because okay. we expose in our ranks who is who. And then when somebody is acting different than who they profess to be, they're not us. Mm -hmm. They invader and they're an infiltrator. Right. And, but you have to know the, the MO, the modus operandi of the ones who's doing the infiltrate and what they're here for, who mm -hmm. sent them. Right. So once you understand that, then you say, well, what strategies is common for these people? What do they use to win in their wars? And this is what they will be using against us. Their greatest tool is called deception. Right. False narratives and misleading dead ends. Mm -hmm. So when Noble Drew Ali said get a good Moorish education, he didn't mean to stop with the pamphlets. The pamphlets were just some codes. It's all data codes. Right? It's certain stuff he say in the pamphlets that lead you to a broader spectrum of research if you know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Thank you. That cleared up everything that I had a question on about that. He's always talking about no Noble Drew Ali. Always talking about him. Always referring to him. Yeah. But he says so, it in a different way than you. So, <laughs> Noble Jali was native over here. He was, but right. he had to find out what was going on on the land. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what's going on, there's no way to fight for freedom if you don't know what's really going on versus what it looked like on the surface. Right. I mean, you have to dig in places that other people are not going to look. Right. He found himself after years of traveling the sea, trying to find stuff out, settling in New Jersey. This is where he encountered the Moorish Zionist temple. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So when he found out the conjure that they was maintenancing was the 200 years George Washington conjure. He said the only way out of this, the chiefs need to know what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So he had to put the Masonic secrets in the public domain. And this is why you see um, a lot of um, sensationalism in our art, because that's how we express the idea. A picture is worth a thousand words, but a word is just a word. Right. Right. So we can tell more through art and artistic expression in one sentence than we could in a whole book. Yep. Well, thank you, Copper Tone. Thank you. Coming up and answering that question. It's so nice to see you. Thank you, Rob. Um, yes. well, who was next, Dulcie? Was it Madden? Did Madden? Madden already got a question. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah, Madon already got. So yeah. it's uh, E Bizzle next. Then it's. You've uh, already asked the question. Could you come down, please? Yes, you will know. Ibizzo, hey, brother. Hey, hey, what, what's the word? The word is, what's your question, brother? Uh, oh, okay. I, I I just wanted to say hi, hi mama, first and foremost. <laughs> hi, mama. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi, mama. Hello. And uh, 
just wanted to ask Dulce, uh, what what's the word? What she what she been uh, working on? No, Ibizzle, you're asking a question to Rod, please. He ain't thinking about me. You know what, Ibizzle? Ibizzle, do you have a question for Rod Hayes? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, Brody, what's good with you, Brody? Man, nothing much. Take it easy. What's good with you? Man, man, you know I'm feeling good like a Hebrew should. Okay. Uh, you already know. Yeah. What Don't park the red seat for us. I, 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 I wanted to, I wanted to ask you, bro. What, what's your uh your thoughts on the uh, on the scriptures, bro? What scriptures? Uh, on that Jeremiah, Jeremiah one and uh five. Oh well, first I don't do the Bible at all. That has nothing to do with me. Okay. Oh, all right. Thank you, Ebezo. Now I guess now we're gonna go to Tammuz. I love that name. Hey, I like brother. Them, I like the dreads. Is it dreads or braids? <laughs> yeah, them, them, the dreads, man. Dreads yeah, looking good, boy. Looking good. Yeah, my is what they do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I want to just say, Brother Rod Hayes, first of all, thank you for blessing us with your presence. Uh, you kind of remind me of uh, 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 Bobby Hemmett and, and, and them old school brothers that many of them died off uh, or their knowledge wasn't understood. So it got trapped in the pseudo prison. And, and uh, you know, many people didn't understand that uh, the higher we go in knowledge, the more the knowledge is hidden. And that's the kind of game that you are kicking. I, I, I love, uh, as a matter of fact, I heard you on another show and I was very intrigued. You you cause people to think, my brother. Yeah. And uh, I, I go outside of the box of even what has been, like uh, Sister Freedom was speaking earlier, talking about where's your source? Where's your source? Where's your source? Sometimes the source is from the blood. That's like right. The, just like the mitochondria DNA, the source is from the blood. Sometimes you're given a wisdom or a knowledge that is difficult to explain where it came from, but from within oneself. Uh, but with that being said, I do have two issues with some of the teachers that you had, and I would be honored if you allow me the time to hear your response on, on having a deeper understanding on it. That's what we're here for. Okay, so be it. Number one, I do believe that uh, we are, I'll say at least 70, uh, maybe even 60% uh, of us who were in America's have been here way before colonization. And when Genghis Khan, who was also uh, an individual who studied the art of war, they learned that instead of killing all of their people, the campaign to kill them would cost too much. So they sent their Asian descendantry of Genghis Khan, when the when them Asian nations gathered together, they sent them through the Barren Straits into the Americas. We have the descendants of Genghis Khan's among us, and they're called Native Americans today. But we did intermingle with them. But, okay, with that being said, my brother, my question to you is, even though we are dealing with that, we are indigenous in my belief to the world, to the earth itself, like you were saying. So it doesn't matter if we go, I don't have to be a Pan-Africanist to understand that I can go to Africa and rule. I can rule in America. I can rule in Australia. I can go over the hell I want to rule, but here's the issue. America is a bad mother. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your <laughs> mouth. <laughs> it's not to be played with and misunderstood. But That's many right. of us underestimate our enemy here in America. So I say, why not us go together and cultivate with the Africans just to build? I, yes, I am an indigenous American, 
but America is going down the toilet with homosexuality, transsexuality, uh, whorism, whoremongerism, and mm. one not in the other. Hey, man, look, I got caught on my uh, soapbox. So I apologize. I finna step down. I thought I thought I was talking. Should you confused me for a minute? <laughs> He you, you, you turned right into you, didn't he, Rod? Yeah, he did. I thought I was looking in the mirror, having a conversation with myself as I do so often. You possess me. Well, go ahead, Listen, brother. If you would, I don't know if you was here at the beginning, but I told okay. Sister Freedom, I say I'm a Pan-Africanist too. Really? But from my understanding of Garvey's teaching, we were supposed to form a world's confraternity. Right. And from that kind fraternity, they're going to tell us where we're from. And in that kind fraternity is where we come together to fight the common enemy and the purveyors of this doctrine called white supremacy. Mm. I used to get told a lot, ain't nobody white, right? No white supremacy. Yes, they did. It's a little. It's in the Willie Lynch thing. You got stuck, right? It's Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. Okay. This is the operating manual of white supremacy. Okay. The control manual that tell them what they enforcing is called the Protocols of Zion. I didn't write it. It's on paper. And if you analyze it with the reality you live in, you will see it all playing out in front of you. They told us what they was doing. Then they did it. Mm. And then they challenged us at the end to come in and undo what they did. And that's what we're doing right now. I got a question. Woo, right yep. there. You just said a lot. Let me ask you something. Is it possible that they told us what they're doing? Because if you can get God to believe that you can destroy him, you will be able to do it. Now, now let me reiterate. Why are they telling us, oh, it was leaked. The King Nafford plan was leaked. This plan was leaked. That oh. plan was leaked. Maybe these son of a guns are leaking them with the esoteric purpose of, if I make that God believe that this is my plan and that's what I'm doing, and he believes that I can do it, then and only then can I actually do it. So I'm very cautious of individuals who have leaked their plans to us. Uh, how do you feel about that, my brother? Okay, so we live in what's called a free will universe. Okay. And when two free will people encounter each other, the only way one can override the other one's will is by over overt force or by deception. <laughs> so they use the law of the jungle first. Yes. That's the warfare. But they still have to tell us what they're doing but they can deny it. Mm. Right. Same so the so-called leak is fulfilling that fact that they have to tell us what they're doing to us before they're doing it and while they're doing it because at any time we become aware of what they're doing, we can stop it. We don't have to consent any longer. We can disagree. We can separate. But as long as we going along to get along, they're using our God power to their advantage. Turn Ain't it on ourselves. Medicine, though, Rod. How they doing medicine? You ever see on the commercials? They give you medicine. They tell you all the stuff that can happen to you if you take it. And we Look still see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the side effect lists longer than the commercial for the medicine. Wow. Wow. Well said. Okay. My second question. Uh, and this is a, this is a, oh man, this is one that's special to me because I used to seriously believe that the black woman was God. All right. Now, let me tell you now. Yes, that is. <laughs> Preach, brother. I used to believe that the black woman 
was God until my genie sent a moon. She said, you know what, baby, every time you call me a God, I feel as if though you are calcifying me with masculine energy. Because why don't you call me a goddess? Why do you call me a God? And I was like, so what, what, what look, she's supposed to be uh, building with uh, Sister Freedom on Monday. And I'm trying to say, you know what? I'm gonna have to talk to you because a lot of that, what she's talking about gonna be on the show. But I just wanna say this as far as the matriarch is concerned. And I wanna be real general with this. All right, here's the problem that we have. Women have been taught, I believe, to not value themselves on, on a level that is ridiculous. And men have been taught to worship the women at the same time and not value themselves. So I believe that the matriarch is important. The patriarch is important or we will not come together and build a monarch. The patriarch by himself and the matriarch by herself. So when you got brothers like you, brother, your knowledge is beyond me. I, I humble myself to a lot of the teachings that I've seen in your videos. I'm like, this brother is getting downloads from abo up above. But I believe there are some things that are concrete. It ain't about knowledge. It's about women need to know their place. Men need to know their place. If And if that don't happen, we won't have balanced relationships. Um, how do you feel about that, brother? So you hear me speak on <coughs> raising the matriarchy a lot. Oh, yeah, exactly. The, the reason why I don't speak on the patriarchs, because... I don't have to tell a man when he see a woman in her feminine self, he gonna already boss up. He know that he had to be his best self if he wants that one. Hmm. Right? He can't, the, the, the girl of your dreams, right? The girl of your dreams, when you see her in your physical form, because she didn't fulfill her divinity, at the earth angel you don't want to be at your lowest when you encounter that because you don't feel like you would have a chance to capture the girl of your dreams so you're going to have to be a man mm -hmm. the kind of man that every woman won't is the man that every woman won't mm. woo so, so I don't have to focus on the brothers when okay. these women start being feminine again yeah, and they start loving on each other again we gonna say hey man y'all I ain't going in there with my pants sagging down my ass hanging out cause them sisters right there they ain't regular hey so See, let me ask you this brother. let me ask you this though because you said a lot but you said something very key, and I want to respond to that, and that is, well, how can we do that, right, if 80% of these young men are being raised by their mama without their daddy there to teach them this thing? You, you dig what I'm saying? So these young men, like you said, he needs to be in a certain position when he meets that woman, but he's not going to be there if his mama raised him by herself. He's only going to be there if his daddy was there. So what I'm trying to share with you, my brother, is we got more brothers. I'm going to tell you, I talk to them every day. Man, if you start the teaching to the brothers just as much, I ain't saying, I believe your knowledge is universal, but I think you teach to the sisters too much and to the brothers not enough. And we don't need to teach to the brothers that we need to submit to the matriarch, I think you need to teach to the brothers that we need to deserve a position to lead and guide the matriarch into a so, monarch. Well, one of the things that we got to understand about the matriarch is the best man for the job is the man the matriarch pick every time. 
<laughs> the best okay. man for the job. She not going to pick the second best because why would she do that? There's no woman out there you ask, hey, I'm the third best person for this position. You think I could get the job? She was like, well, who's two and one? <laughs> right. That part. She don't want the third best, the second best. She want the best. That's just the rule of the matriarchy. And if you are a leader as a man, okay. right, when you go on, you have to have a destination, first of all. My destination is raise the matriarchy, restore the great mother. That's where I'm going. Okay. Now, my cause of action is to restore heaven on earth by putting the great mother back on her seat. If I if I can be successful in alerting the people to the return of the great mother and the restoration of the great mother back to her proper position and the women start to heal, I'm going to be fine after that. I don't need no more. But the rest of the purpose of my life after that is work the fields with my mother, with my hands, with my sons. She right, so but my mission is to raise the matriarchy. I know that the men gonna see it because they didn't want to listen to me when I tried to tell them about it before I started teaching the sisters. This is the part you didn't know about. I was okay. teaching the men. I only been teaching the sisters five years. From the day I started getting knowledge, I've been teaching the brothers. Right. So now it's time for me to do what Elijah told me. Eighty five percent of the work is with the women. And the women bring them in. Okay. And then, yeah. First and then yeah. Noble Drew Ali say the we hear the, the uplift. Brings that. <laughs> yeah. Noble Drew Ali say we hear the uplift fall of humanity and the, who's fall of humanity. The great mother ain't on her throne. That's when humanity fell. You're right. Right. So if we uplift fallen humanity, we all go back to being humane to one another. We stop allowing people to train our children and hypnotize them into believing that they're an alternate gender from what they mama produced. Wow. Right? This is a concerted effort of warfare used against us to influence our children. It's part of something called a gay agenda. Yes, yes sir. And Yes. We first had to regain control of our community, put the great mother back on her throne, and it's automatic. We automatically start reorganizing the communities. Wow. You right? know what? I'm sorry. I don't Go ahead, big mom. Well, my friend and sister, Senna Moon, she's writing two books. I was wondering if her husband was going to bring it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you, I mean, because he would be a great candidate. So you go ahead. I'm gonna let you go ahead on and bring up about Grandpa's wisdom. And, and yeah, grandpa. yeah, okay. As as a matter of fact, that is interesting. Thank you, Sister uh, Freedom, for bringing that up. Um, you know, my my first lady is writing a book, my brother, uh, uh, Rod Hayes, on patriarchal uh, knowledge. But primarily, the book is for sisters. It, interesting. Uh, the, the book is called Grandma's Secrets. And Grandma had a lot of interesting knowledge that has now been classified as secrets because we lost the connection on the importance of sharing. So she's collecting, she's even talking to this sister in uh, Houston who's the oldest female in America today. She's a black woman. She's 114 years old. We mm. finally got in touch with her family. So we've been blessed to get her to write something in the book too. But uh, what the sister was talking about is I, I don't doubt that the female is the mitochondrial DNA. She's the mycelium grid of our people. I'll say it again. The black woman is the mycelium grid of our people. Traumas and good things. And, and if and we can protect her, from the traumas, uh, man, we'll be amazing. I just thought that we, our brothers, we need a little kick in our ass, bro. <laughs> we need a little kick in our ass without coming off as a, a beta male, like we're trying to placate to our women. We need our women to know 
that we want to rule. We want to be in power, but I don't think we can do that until we acknowledge how weak we are. The strongest, uh, the, the, the most uh, valuable uh, strength is acknowledging your weakness. And we don't do that uh, as brothers uh, enough. But, bro, I'm humbled by your wisdom. I'm going to check out the rest of the show. Continue to teach the greatness. But me and you got to talk, bro, because I think together we can do something at least in between worlds that will create a dawn or a dusk. Right. Thank you so much, Tamu. Right. It's a prosperity. <laughs> Peace, God. Peace. Um, I brought uh, up may I ask you about the one more question? Sure. Just one second, please. I brought up the books because she has a lot of wonderful people just writing small stories of what they can remember that their grandmother or grandfather taught them. And you would be wonderful to write a, a just a little small thing of what you can remember that you was taught by your grandma. Or your grandpa. I love the books. One, Grandma Sneakers, Secrets, and Grandpa's Wisdom. Even Judge Joe Brown is writing in the book. What's this? When I was a little boy, I used to listen to my big mama tell my mama stuff about me in my future. <laughs> Shirley? Now you see this one here? He <laughs> sees things. You need to pay attention when he tell you something. I used to give people the lottery number till they started exploiting the gift, making wow. promises to a little kid and not keeping them. If mm -hmm. I hit the number, I'm going to take you shopping. They knocked the aluminum siding out the number. <laughs> and, and forget if they never take me shopping. Wow. So the gift turned off section from exploitation oh that's a shame but okay i'm gonna be quiet and let madden <laughs> ask but just know that you're gonna be getting a phone call concerning the all right, i appreciate that sis uh, um, once again um brother rob salute king uh my next question is um you said you from mississippi right um well you know i'm from alabama i'm from red there alabama but my question is um you heard of um mound bayou uh mississippi Yes, I heard of it. I was wondering, right, um, why would an ex-slave name that town Mound Bayou? And, I, well, my question is two-part. And why is, are so many small towns in the South uh, predominantly black? Because, like, Mound Bayou is 100% black. Um, the town that I live in is, like, 80% black. And a lot of the towns beside it. Or you know, predominantly black, and it's been that way for for years. So, um, why would you think uh, my ex slave would name a town Mound Bayou, and why do you think um, a lot of these small towns are predominantly black? Is it because of slavery or um, something else? Okay, so um, first of all, we was prisoners of war. We weren't slaves. The slave narrative was told to conceal the fact that we was prisoners of war at home. Second, the Trail of Tears was a swap out of a different group of people that they brought with them as servants to replace the tribes. Those cities that's predominantly us in the South is that way on purpose because a lot of them was villages before they were cities and we had settlements down there as they ousted us on the trail of tears and continued on with the imposters to settle on the reservations and they used the paper genocide to reclassify us in a legal system but we really, our real legal determination is belligerent tribes because we was the tribes that refused to um, sign treaties with them. Some of my ancestors was part of the tribes that did, but part of my ancestry come from what they call the outlaw tribes. The outlaw tribes is the ones like the Mississippians who would have uh, never agreed to any of their terms because they would have knew they was lying 
right? So they didn't never trust them to sign anything. And they wanted us to surrender land. And that's to us like selling your mama. They believe in selling their mama and their children. We don't. That's the difference in how you know them from us. <clears throat> Did I answer your question? Yeah, no doubt. I appreciate that. Because yeah, I always wonder, right? Well, I hear a lot of the people um, here say, you know, they've been here since they've been here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was always wondering because, you know, I live in a lot of these small towns and a lot of the names are native names. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of these mm. small towns in Mississippi and Alabama. And I always wonder, you know, since a lot of this information is coming out, like, you know, all my life, I know these towns has always been predominantly black. Look up Ch Chief Tuscaloosa. He he was he he was dark. <laughs> Contrary to yeah, I'm about I'm about thirty miles. Yeah, mm -hmm. I grew up going back and forth to Tuscaloosa, um, back and forth across the um, Black Warrior River. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I know exactly what you talk about. Yeah, they just you know whitewashing history so that we would think that the pale face is the enemy. While these um, imposters is pretending to be us. Like, we're not going to know our people. And that's why they give us um, an alternate perspective of history so that we could celebrate the oppressor as if he saved us from ourselves. He didn't save us from nothing. We was doing just fine until they came over here. We dealt with ourselves how we dealt with ourselves. Then they upset our peace. And I'm here to establish justice. Big mom. Yes, I'm here. So oh, 50 came on. That's what I was going to say. And that his name was get me there for a second. <laughs> 12 o'clock. Now, this probably be the last question unless we got one more question, but we're not going to hold right too long, but go ahead um, and ask your question. Is that 12 o'clock? Yeah. Um, Peace, everybody. You know, I just want to know, you know, listen to Ra. You on point. I'm with you. And all that. The platform, I love the platform and everything. Thank you. So what's your question? No questions. I just, you know, just I'm, I'm on here just listening. Okay. Not a problem then. Thank you very much for the compliment and for coming up. Appreciate you. Yeah. No problem. No problem. Well, Rob, we done kept you past the time. Not that much past though. No. Because we, we appreciate you so much. We really doing so much knowledge spews out one individual. I don't even know how you can remember the, the, the things that you talk about. I, I don't know how you can retain all of the information inside your mind like that. But we we appreciate you coming on and giving it to us. You no know, problem. You've around and you've met so many different people and talked so much that you know. You wonder how long is it going to take? And I agree with you because here's the thing. When you bring back the matriarch, you bring back the first teacher. And if if mama is strong, and mama has to be strong because any situation could be happening when she's raising her children by herself. You understand? But people, a lot of times people say that you need to have a father there I, I say it like this. I raised my son by myself. His dad has always been in Jamaica. But here's my thing. Not paying attention. Other men was in my life raising my son. And I didn't even realize it. Just like he goes to kickboxing. Almost every day. It's nothing but men there. You, you know, the, the mosque. I raised my son Muslim. Not even thinking there's men there that's talking to him and pretty much raising him and not even realizing that there is a man part there raising him, but me not really paying attention. So that's, that. the that's the instinct of a matriarch. 
She know that her son need to see a man to be a man. Anybody born with the gender can be male, but only certain types of men is the influence that a matriarch will want around her son. So sometimes the father might have problems with drugs or alcohol or whatever, hookers, whatever his vice is, and it don't work. The wise women know to expose their son to strong, positive, driven men. And so she does that unconsciously and might see it years later, as in your case. But you follow in something that the matriarchs teach the women anyway. If your relationship doesn't work and you can't, for whatever reason, he might have a mental disorder and might hurt you and the children. So you can't have them around. And the matriarchy tell the women, if you have sons, make sure that they're exposed to the type of men that you want your son to become. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the exposure allows him to see what his masculine side is supposed to look like. Right? But the women that's caught in the feminist agenda, they don't want their son to exhibit masculine traits. Mm. So that the patriarchs that they represent as drag queens can be the dominant male figure for the women to look at. And they all got skeletons in their closet bigger than dinosaurs. Mm. And so they long as our men don't just do what the man supposed to do. It's like in my case, my mama sent me to do this work. She don't send me to do nothing this complex just to be sending me. Somebody finna get this work. My mama said we ain't come from no Africa. I don't need now nobody else to tell me nothing after that. We ain't from Africa. Hmm. My daddy told me about his Native American grandmama hair down to her ankles. I don't need nobody else to tell me nothing. I know what's going on. I read the culture and I read the history. And the culture don't agree with what the history is telling us. Okay. So I'm telling the people what the culture say. OTK just hit the hit the panel. Hey OTK. Hey, what's going on? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? My family, my family. How y'all <laughs> OTK. Man, I just get off my own plantation, you know. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah. Man, it's it's, it's springtime. It's springtime in, in South Carolina. You see how you got on what you got on right there, Sister Freedom? That's how yeah. people was walking around today, tomorrow. It's in the 80, 80 something tomorrow. It's it was hot like here today. South is lovely right now. I spring mm -hmm. this early. I'm <laughs> loving it too. Uh, but I got to give a shout out to, to my goddess Dots, my goddess Nisha, my cousin from Georgia, and my sister from Dosanea from another mother. You know, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Peace to y'all <laughs> first and foremost. Not to my brothers of the panel. Peace to y'all too. To the Infamous Rob Hayes, man. I'm gonna tell you, my brother, my brother. I never don't don't take this as no disrespect because I always I I'm new to this YouTube thing. I never knew who you was. Hey, hey, look at look at all my beautiful goddesses. Oh my sister. <laughs> I'm a day one, day one, two now, Rob. And I'm gonna tell you, man, um, I never I never knew like um the things about you until like recently from you being on this show and then you being with Top Cats, you know what I mean? Shouts out to Top Cats and BCU, you know what Yeah, I mean? shout out to Top Cats. I mean, I learned a lot from the, from that brother and those family over there, man. I learned a, a, a great deal, man. Um, But just from that, from learning you from that, man, um, man, I have to I have to give my gratitude, keep up the good work, man. I see you an elder in this day, man, so I'm from South Carolina, uh, born and raised. Well, I was raised in Chicago, but came back to South Carolina. Um, family always been here. What you know about South Carolina, man? I'm from That's the where Street we, area, too. 
next to Charleston, like 10 minutes next to Charleston. Mm-hmm. Kakalaki. Yeah, that's the original <laughs> name. And that's I try to tell people that's a worldwide name. Everybody from South Carolina <laughs> recognizes Kakalaki. Kakalaki. South Kakalaki. <laughs> Kakalaki, yes. Um, so my, my people's them descend from like the Edawans, uh, the Siwi, Edistos, Stonos, um, <clears throat> turned into the Wasamasa and then uh, Somerville Indians. We're still right here in Goose Creek. Uh, plenty of cemeteries, military base built a uh, base over one of the cemeteries. So um, I, I, when I got into YouTube, man, when I saw Top Cat on Sarnetta, I said, oh, it's people like me out here. Because <laughs> I just thought it was, you know. Now I'm I'm a '70s baby man, so I came up with Grandmama saying, "Yeah, we are this," and then my mama getting indoctrinated in school and saying, "Coming home and saying, no, we're this," and then me getting indoctrinated in school and saying, "No, we're this." <laughs> so, yeah, man. So, shouts out to you. But what, what you what you say about the South, man? So the Carolinas is very instrumental in this entire 500 year struggle. It was the Gullah Geechee Big Mama, who was the highest matriarch on the land, called all of the tribes to war against the Spanish in Florida in the Gullah Wars. All right. <clears throat> when the Afro chiefs arrived, this is when they start calling us Seminoles. And they said that the Afro chiefs were runaway slaves. That's the Seminole narrative. Right. The, right. the Gullah narrative is Big Mama said, all hands on deck, we got invaders at the wind at the door. Some of us went to su give support against the French in Louisiana, and the rest of us, all hands was on deck moving into florida that's why florida the finish line right mm -hmm. but the the car came from the carolinas mm -hmm. and this is why uh um uh, uh big mama mother uh empress redbird had to be coming from carolinas because the same place that she emerged is the same place that we got the call and this is why they were saying that we was runaway slave. We wasn't running away from plantations. We was running away from family settlements that they had encampments around to keep us on. And when they took Big Mama out, they took her name off Big Mama House and called it the Big House. And Slick Willie, she was married to, dressed up like the butler and put on them put them fancy white folk in them fancy clothes and told them that they was the owner all the time that house nigga was running the show this what happened to us this is why we were so adamantly against the house nigga but see he used to behind the scenes treat miss and them the same way they treated us in the field and when Miss Ann them get tired of it, they realized that he didn't actually gave them too much power and they ousted him from the house. He ran out to the field for help. And we none the wiser. So after the fact, right. then we start realizing we can't stand them house niggas. I don't. All right. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to circle back around to the house. <laughs> To that house nigga part, I know exactly what you talk about. So, so yeah. when you talk about the the Seminole, uh, you, you're talking about uh, after the Yamasi, after the Yamasi Wars, because you know the Yamasi Wars, you know them boys went up into the, the north and helped the north out. You know what I mean? And then they came on down, and then they the last battle was right here in Goose Creek, in the city that I am, Goose Creek, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. The last battle was here, and when they when the last battle happened after that, this is when we find Georgia being formed. And so when Georgia King George being formed, King George was solicited by the French to sponsor Georgia as a state to stop mm -hmm. us from supporting the Gullahs and they was put a military force in the state of Georgia 
to try to right. stop us from giving that back up. This is when we went into the conjure right. wars. This is right. the cause. Right, right. And they, and they was and they, and that's only because pretty much they was the, the gullahs from what my research is, and now I'm talking about the, the Gale, the G U A L E people, you know what I mean, on the coast. When I see all those islands, they was island people <laughs> all the way from South Carolina, parts of North Carolina, because North Maroon. Carolina, South Carolina too, and they was on that whole coast island, they was like island hopping. Like the, a mate being the a Gullah part, Geechee, a major part of the inlands because what they was getting in that sea and on the islands, they was bringing inland. Look, go ahead, go ahead. The, the, what's special about the Gullah Geechee people when we talk about <clears throat> the royal families from Africa marrying into the royal families over here before Columbus came, they a prime example of that. They're a prime example of that. They knew what tribes that the people that married into the people over here was from. And then their history was changed to the slave narrative. But they was here long before that. Settled on them islands, just like you're talking about. The, 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 the sea islands. We call, them, we call them the sea cotton islands. That's what we call mm -hmm. them. But they was yeah. able to produce cotton and rice on those islands, man, and wild fruit. Everything was on those islands. And even to the day, and I can tell you one thing that I know about those people from over there, they have their own type of language, bro. And I'm yeah. from South Carolina, bro. And you know what I mean? They got their own type of dialect of, of language over there. Them Sea Island, they, you know what I mean? I, you know, it, it's a bunch of rich history with the with, with them. Yes, it is. Their culture itself is um, seductive to our people because the way that they fuse their indigenous ancestry and their African ancestry is almost hypnotic to experience for us. Right, 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 right. And and that's what that's what that that's what I get the headache at. <laughs> that's why I get the headache at. <laughs> you know what I mean sometimes um so um south carolina you know I, I i stick within my state um i do a research without out, outside of my state but i mainly study like the american indian slave trade and uh, uh south carolina do you believe in the american indian slave trade the only uh, we with pow they call it the slave trade to try to convince us that we came from somewhere else. Yeah, we were prisoners of war yes. at home. Yes. Okay, okay. I, I agree with that. Um, I, I definitely agree with that. Prisoners of war. And that, that came over 400 years of fighting over here. <clears throat> so in South Carolina, I found out that it was a certain time period that more American Indians was getting shipped out of Charleston than Africans was being brought in. They were they was just natives from another part of the land. This is and the switch the, out. And that's, and that's the key I was telling my sister Dots. Look, remember I was talking about ahead, I was ahead, talking about ahead. the Trail of Tears and how they pushed us out on the that's that's they were saying we was Africans, but we wasn't no damn Africans. We was already here. That's just to make us not reclaim the land at the close of the age. Trick no good. Ben Elder, hey, respect, duty. <laughs> and I was telling my, my goddess, Dots, I was like, Dots, I said, do you know about the Barbadians in South Carolina? She was like, yeah, I heard of the Barbadians. I was like, yeah, but do you know about them? She was like, no, nah, not, not really like that, OTK. I don't understand where you're going. So what I was telling her is pretty much what you're saying. We know that we have been getting taken from here and getting taken into the islands. And then turn around and being brought back. Some escape, but then turn around and being brought right back. But now when they bring them brought back, it's the kids. So they don't know that they left from up there. They coming back to a place where they came and now they got a new name. They leaving out as a Pequot Indian going down to Barbados or they leave, they leaving out as a Yamasee or they, 
you know what I mean, or, or, or Wampanoag or, or a Narragansett, they leaving out as one of these prisoners of war, leaving out, going down to the Carib Islands, and then turning around and their kids is coming, bringing them right back on up because they work in the same spots. Reason why and, we know this and, is because And if you pay attention to what you're saying, Go ahead, go ahead. Look, it's just what you're describing is the the call back home that Mother Nature giving their kids. When we have to move for a purpose like war, right? We always going to return back to the part of the land we originate from. We have to. It's in our nature. We everybody makes a pilgrimage back home. They don't know why they're going. You hear people now, girl, I'm going to Texas. I'm, I don't know why I'm going down there, but I got to go to this game. But it got to be the game in Texas. They having the car to go to Texas. They just need an excuse. Because they, they see something spiritually that they can't explain in the 3D. Nature calling them to Texas. Now they looking for a game in Texas so they can have an excuse to go. Because they don't know how to tell their friends that they just had uh, a spiritual experience and they realize that they need to go to Texas, even if it's just to spend the weekend. Yeah, okay, so um, why, why, why you think that is? Why, why you think? No, I'll tell you why. People are scared to admit something that's foreign to them, something they ain't did before, and they don't want to admit they was wrong and something could be better for them. And they don't mean it like not like the horse to the water, but they everybody get their own mistakes and this stuff they ain't learned on, they ain't built on yet. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the reason why oh you got them jakes on deck. Yeah. <laughs> Already, but now nah. you trying to be like Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Hey, but what y'all think about that though? Uh, why you think people don't want to admit? Their mistakes so they fall and then we we try to show our best self and for good reason you supposed to so it'll be a positive a, a bra you get what i'm saying so yeah yeah what's up how you doing how you doing family doing good who, who's speaking to, to go, you this otk bro been holding him for a long time hold on y'all before before Rod, before where I leave, um, one thing um that caught my attention was you mentioned that the Gullah Geechee had African ancestry. Yeah. Thank you. That was all I needed to hear. Say it one more time for me. Say it for the people in the back. They do. Thank it's you. In they, it's in their it's in their culture. It's in their blood. They know. They know the African. Ken folks they got on the other side of the water. That's yeah, that, why we that, that's, that's the difference be, between a lot of the rest of us is that we don't trace back to Africa because we was already here. And if we did, we would be able to Gullah Geechee trace back to Africa. Right. They can I tell did. you when they got wow. tribal history of interacting with Africans long before Columbus. Right. I understand that history. I'm from Savannah, so I know. I, but, you, you know, people don't tell me 30 million thousand times it ain't just always here. I mean, I don't heard that so much. But and one more thing, since I ain't really spoke none. One more thing um, before you leave. Um, how did someone that was always here get tricked into thinking that they was from someplace else? Kill off the key, uh, the adults and, and educate the kids in your school system. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Gotcha. All right. There you go. And being hey, Rob, real quick, what, what Nisha was saying, um, Doc, excuse me, what Nisha was saying, I want you to um, build on that. Okay. Now, when you talk about the Gullah, Ge the Gullah Geechee, right, we know that they came from two different people to start yeah. off two different tribes right yeah native tribes of south carolina right yeah all right what did they mix with the european first no they the never european mixed the, the european wasn't coming over here when the, the Gullah Geechee. Out, no the, no i'm talking about before the Gullah Geechee. i'm talking about the gale coast 
And then you got the Geechee Coast from the Ogeechee River. See, you got the Geechee name from the Ogeechee. So that, that was already a tribe. And then you got the Gale Coast, which is G-U-A-L-E. And that yeah. leads all the way on down, all the way to Florida. So now we know that's a tribe. Those was like a sea, sea coast and tribe people and pretty much the islanders. Yeah. These same islands. All right. So what I'm asking you is, with that being said, these are the people that the Africans mix with that you're saying? They were doing trade and marrying in the royal families with Africans long before Columbus sailed. Okay. Okay. They had already had a communication and presence in communication with both sides of the water. All right. They so want us to believe that only when the European come did we discover Africans. All right, all right. So let me ask you this. Right. Was it people that looked like Africans in the Caribbeans and in South America? Yeah. So they how, looked, how, how, they how, had similar they had similar features and phenotypes. Right. So how we don't know it wasn't the people that was coming from South America and the Carib Islands first, rather than coming way from Africa. Because the yeah. Africans but that they did it make sense since you said it was trade. Wouldn't it make yeah. sense for the closest place we would trade to first before we they go? They traded all up in, listen, they traded oh, Africans oh, traded with our tribes all up and down the eastern seaboard. Including the islands. What year, what year was this? This was before Columbus. Uh, for thousands of years. It's nothing new. It's okay, not new to us right. over here to to have interaction with Africans. What's yeah, new to I'm us is but to tell us that we are Africans when most is, of us was already here. Find the name African written that we was in a mixing with African. We didn't see that name. So what name would I be looking for, Elder? You know what I mean? Because I might be seeing another name. The, 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 the easiest that. example for you to, to, to research is Mansa Musa. If, if not mistaken, you're talking about because it wasn't called Africa back in the early 70s. No, they, so they would call them by the Africa. tribe. They wouldn't right. be called African. Right. They would right. No, they would be referred to by the tribes. Thank you. So that's why I'm asking them because that's and that's why another I'm reason the dead end, end, right? I'm looking for African, but I that's why I'm hitting the dead end. So that's why I'm asking out of respect. Yes. Right. So, yeah, they okay. wouldn't be referring to to the because you had they had seafaring tribes long before Columbus sailed. This is how the Moorish navigators knew where to come to look for a settlement. Right. Because it was in the log that all of the navigators of the world had at the time. This was just an off limits land that they wasn't supposed to touch. That's why they call it God's country. Can I tell this? Can I tell this too? We had to have ports over here for them to make it over here and make it back. Hold up, genocide. Hold up. All of these things that you're talking about, about people coming over here before Christopher Columbus and it was uh, noted. Right. Is, is that not a myth? Are these not myth stories because the Vikings got one, the Portuguese them got one, the India, Hindustan got one? The Vikings did come yeah. over here before Columbus. So you're talking about the Norse, the, the Celtic, and the people yeah. like that? They, they, today we call them Hell's Angels because they was given the charter to Rome as nomads. Now, did they hit North America? Where yeah. What, what part of North America? Like, if I'm not mistaken, like 10, 12. Vikings Where is that written at? Is that not a myth? Oh, it's it's is not, that a myth. not a myth. Story? There, there's is artifacts. That that there's artifacts that accompany that. Is what, What's the artifacts? Who do, where did they, they have, get that? They have stone. They have stones that they wrote on when they came. That was here before the settlers by hundreds of years. I bet. Okay. What? What can I find that at? 
See, I'm asking not, seriously. I'm not asking for no no because this is this is new to me because I heard all look, this was Discovery good. Channel did a whole show on it. That's a good place to start. Discovery? Discovery Channel. They the videos on YouTube. And they but it was, was produced by myth. Discovery Channel, Vikings in America. Yeah, that was a myth though. That was a Viking story. Well, why would why would they make a story? Yep, why they have to make a story that they were in America? That's what that's what History Channel does. They all say at the beginning that these are all disclaims and none of these events may have happened and, and all this right here. They never say it's no. absolute truth. I don't understand that. I don't see why somebody would wait to time. But this it's not no problem. Just check. <laughs> Yeah, I, I watched that episode. I, that's what I'm saying. I know what it say. I'm I'm on them channels. I'm trying yeah, to tell you. I'm on them shit. I, I'm trying to tell you. So, OTK, the reason why you're <laughs> asking, like, just to put, some con- OTK, to put some context, like, the reason why you're at, like, so you're, the reason why you're asking for more clarity is the so- reason why I'm asking for more clarity is because I, I didn't, that story sounds familiar. You know what I mean, and um, <clears throat> I'm wondering what, where is this coming from because, you know, what I mean, it all started from the Gullah Geechee, but then we know those was two different tribes that was already here because Nisha yeah. asked about the African, so I asked him was they mixed with Spanish or European first. He said no. Okay, so that's all. That's oh. all I was doing. So I was asking questions so I can so I can go back and research these things. You know what I mean? That's they'll, what, t- that's they'll tell you. Do you go down there to talk to the Gullah Geechee? They'll tell you. That I'm you're telling you. Oh, shit. I, I got plenty of family with them. And they say something. T- some of them say something totally different. Some of them say they mix with them. But then that's when you got that word that combines together as the Gullah Geechee. Or sometimes the Geechee Gullah. They switch that interchangeable all around doing here, all around through here. Okay, but, well, you know what they say? They majority act on the sea islands. Mm-hmm. That'll be so. Yeah, what sea about, what about yeah. our John's Island, Island, James Island, James Island, John's Island, heavy mm-hmm. out there. That's where all my cousin and boys are, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I know what I'm talking about. But that's, Jenna, why know, that's why I know about that old stuff. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm pardon, pardon me, Queen. No, I want to know about uh, our, our original languages, though. Like, I know like, our original identity, and then don't get me wrong, that's that's the rabbit hole. Like, you where gotta, did the English come from that you're speaking now? Okay, exactly. English. No, no, I'm asking you. Well, I'm asking you. You want to ask about the original language? Which yeah, is the yes, yes, yes. So, so the word English. Let me let me break down the word English the way I've been taught in school. To be accurate, look, uh, and I, I, I've been learning from different schools of thought so I can properly teach. So check this out. English means English or English or angelish. Or you can go to the angle of stats and all this. You know how people go. Hey, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. Let me, let me, uh, hey, Rod. Hey, no, 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 no. Cool. I, I just want to take my prop. So, Wait a minute. Hey, Rod. Thank you, OG. Yeah. Um, elder man, I'm definitely going to look that up, man. I'm going to study more. So when I see you again, you know what I'm talking about? I'm going to have, I'm going to have, uh, better questions because <laughs> I'm always trying to learn. You know what I mean? So I'm going to have better questions, man. I appreciate you, man. I'm going to just oh, go had, back real quick. You had good valid questions. You had good valid yeah, questions. Thank you. Well, we done had Rod on for way past his time. Yes. yes so we're yes. going to get ready and try to let him leave so he'll feel welcome to come back again when we want him. It's we past his bad time. That nigga was tired. That nigga, that nigga dropped knowledge, though. I appreciate you, bro. Yes. yes. Thank you, Jen, Genocide, for saying I'm that. Saying, no, no. That's why I joined up on the panel. I'm like, this man dropping knowledge. I'll be yes. a part of it. Very knowledgeable. So we don't want to hold you any longer, Rod, because you know we appreciate you. We don't want to <laughs> take advantage of your time, and it's past the time that you said you was going to be with us. Yeah, and we th- thank you so much for that. Yeah. Okay, no yeah. problem. We I appreciate y'all for having me. I'll talk to y'all later. Cash app, Rod. All right, have, have a good app. night. Show you some love in this chat. What's your cash app? Dollar sign, capital S I. K capital A P E. Say it again. Dollar sign mm-hmm. capital S I K capital A P 
P-E. Okay. S-I-K-E-P-E. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I-L-M-S. Only the S and the A is capitalized. Oh, damn. You're going to have to get that one more time. Say it again. Open the knowledge. That's me. Let me put, wait a minute. Let me say it again. Okay. Right. Let me one more time. Say it again. It's dollar sign, capital S, mm-hmm. lowercase I, K, capital A, lowercase P, E. C-K. Okay, I hope I got it right. Capital S, I, K, A. No, capital S, I, K, capital A, P, E. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sigate. Thank you, Straight Smoke. That's an acronym. Soldiers in Columinati are present everywhere. Outlaw. Outlaw. That for sure. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Y'all. I can't <laughs> deny it. <laughs> well, thank you again. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Thank, thank you. you thank you. I'll definitely be with you again. But like I okay. said, you cash app it'll be open to knowledge that's what the otk stand for okay now all right it It was good having this conversation if the rest of y'all going to keep the panel open or y'all closing down the whole show we'll we'll see we'll see um i'm saying i just want to know before i leave if y'all gonna close down the show then i'm going well let him leave first and then just ask us in a minute let him leave all right he's gone (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> look at OTK little so <laughs> that was his that man's got some knowledge with him that was a great build great build and he had some really really good knowledge and you know I love having them on the panel I do him Taj Top Cats OTK Sister Freedom well, Nisha yeah. just wanted that African in her, innit? Well, yeah, well, she found her. I, 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 I ain't mad at her. her. Shit, hell yeah. I ain't mad at her. I, listen, we all of us, nobody disclaiming Africa. We said we African descent yeah. because they have some African in us. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? We just see and find the connection. That's all, but we well, y'all, I'm jumping in right here to say good night because I'm actually heading out with Rod Hayes. You guys have a good night. It was a wonderful build, and I'm gonna see y'all next time. Good it's night. Do that. I'm great. Shut it down. Shut it down. Mm-hmm. For real. I hope you had a good time Come in the dog. chat. Make sure you hit the like button. You know, also be a mem- become a member. You know, we don't pay for guests to come on. They come on of their own free time. So, you know, we do appreciate you guys' support. Hit the like button. Feel free to share. You know, shout out Unscramble Minds. You know, we would really appreciate that for real. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What would you about to say, brother? No doubt. Appreciate you coming. We appreciate you, brother, for coming. Yes, I don't think we're going to stay on long um, because I'm tired, really, to be honest. <laughs> hey, check this out. I can run it on. I can run it up on my account if y'all want to do the after panel, you know, the after show. But uh, honestly, I've been working so hard. Lord, and hey, this, this is the joy I've been getting my coworkers. I drove a box truck. Look, <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know gave me a unit. Oh, um, man. Uh, what was the name of that damn movie? Yeah, look, <laughs> my body just <laughs> up as a man. Yeah, <laughs> the movie that sleepy people. I don't know what movie oh, you're talking no, about. No, 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 it's Gary Union. Uh, cool J. He he driving a box truck. Every oh no, everybody hates Eva. Yeah, so um, we appreciate everybody for um, joining us tonight. And um, if you didn't catch the other video that we did with Rahe's, um go ahead and check that one out. Like, subscribe, and share. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and check us. We're going to put some of the things on members only. So we might need to put that on members only. Yeah. 
All righty. Good night, everybody. Straight smoke. You know how to call me. Just get um, my number from OTK. But um, thank y'all, everybody, for coming. I'm tired myself tonight. I don't know why. And try to get this book if you can. It's on Amazon. It's your book? It yeah, it's mine. But it's no, it's not written by me. It's written by um a different Porter Shimmer. But the book is $50, $54. Okay. It's Make a good book. It's a good book. It's telling me about not... dreams and everything. But wait a minute. Let me let everybody know that Cinnamon, Moon, y'all want to not miss her. She's either going to be on Monday or Wednesday. I'm trying to lock it down now. But when you see her in the notifications, please, everybody, come. Because she has some information for us. Spiritually and mentally and physically, she has information for our minds, our bodies, and our soul. So make sure y'all all don't miss that. Um, put down the notification, put on the community post. Uh, I'll join up if I got the time. Yeah, definitely. Might be at work. I might be at work. No, nah, what I've been doing, I'm trying to get as much work in as possible to make sure I can build myself up and do better shit, you feel me? Instead of, uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I think we might be having a really good guest Friday, too. I'm making phone calls to make sure we have a really, really special guest Friday. That'll be up posted tomorrow. So, y'all, look out for your notifications. So, we're going to go ahead and say good night to y'all. Thank you for coming. And please subscribe and hit the like on your way out. Please. And y'all have a good evening, and we will see y'all shortly. Peace and love. Always love. One love. Peace. Good night.